Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about cash savings and what to do with your cash. And maybe that cash is from a sale of a property, an inheritance, or maybe you just cash out of the market at some point over the last little bit and you're sitting on that cash, not sure in how to deploy it. Now that cash could be sitting in your bank account. It might be sitting in a TFSA, an RSP, or other type of investment account that you're just not sure what to do with and how to make that money work for you. So we're gonna break down a few different options for you today, but we're gonna kind of integrate those options into kind of retirement and financial planning, like why it matters what you invest in based on your retirement and financial plan. Like the two have to come together. And a lot of you look at going after the highest rate, or you know, you lock into a five-year GIC because the numbers look really good versus looking at a one-year GIC, not contemplating when you need your money. So there's a lot more that goes into it than just kind of throwing a dart and finding the highest rate. It comes into planning too. So we're gonna break all this down in this video. So I wanna start off this video going through four different ways to deploy your cash. The solution for each of you is going to be a little bit different. It might be a combination of two, three, or maybe all four of these. Secondly, the rates I talk about today will be different tomorrow, next month, and the month after that. So if you're watching this video down the road, the rates may be different, but the strategy and concept on the most part will stay the same. Case in point, six months ago on this channel, I was talking about some investing similar to this. And I said, look, at this point, GICs don't make sense. GICs were paying about you know sub 2% at that point. It didn't make sense. In fact, GICs were almost the same rate as a high interest savings account. Obviously with interest rates going up now, that's drastically changed. So GICs might start start to make sense for you now. And the spread between a high interest savings account, which is currently 2% and a one year GIC at four and a half percent is drastically different. So let's go through the four options. Option number one for cash is a bank account or a high interest savings account, I like to call it. Typically your big banks, your major financial institutions don't offer the best rates per se. They might have a promotional rate to get you in there. You're typically better going to an online platform like EQ Bank or Tangerine or I know Canadian Tire Bank apparently has a good rate. I've never used them. I personally use EQ Bank and currently their high uh, interest savings account is giving me 2%. Not keeping up with inflation obviously, but 2% is not bad just to have your cash there for the short term. So that would be option one. Again, if you're at the bank or another financial institution, that's not giving you north of one and a half, it might be worth setting up online. And I get asked a lot, you know, a lot of our clients say, Adam, I've never used an online bank. I'm comfortable walking into my major bank. You know, what does that look like? Typically you can get an account set up, you know, in under half an hour online, you link your bank, whatever bank account you currently use, you link to let's say EQ Bank, and it's easy transfer of money in and out. It is very simple. Once you do it once, you'll realize how simple it is. So if you're kind of worried about like, is EQ Bank trusted or Canadian Tire Bank or whoever you're looking to use, any online financial institution, do your homework, see if they're right for you. And if they are, they're probably gonna offer better rates because they don't have the high overhead of the bricks and mortar location on you know on the corner of your street. So that's a lot of the reason why they're able to keep that rate a bit higher because their expenses are a bit lower. The second option for your cash is a GIC. And for many years, I've shied away from GICs. The rates that they were offering to me were not competitive. They weren't worth kind of locking your money in for, but with the recent spike in interest rates, GICs are actually starting to make sense for some of you. If you're sitting on cash, you're not sure what to do with it. We have some clients that are sitting on cash right now and they have a specific action item or, or expense next summer, basically a year away or just a hair over a year away. A one year GIC for them makes sense because they need the money. They don't want to take on any risk with that money and they want the highest rate possible. And so locking into that one year GIC is fine. They don't need that money for the next 12 months. And it lines up with that financial plan, which I'll go to uh, more here in a bit. I know EQ Bank, again, going back to them, just because I use them, their one-year GIC rate is 4.5, their two-year is 4.65. So you get a bit of a bump on a two-year. And again, interest rates might keep going up. And so that rate will keep jumping up a little bit as well. Typically, it's not you know apples to apples. If rates go up 75 basis points, your GIC rates will not go up 75 basis points. It's just not how it works. It's kind of priced in there a bit already. So if we do see another, say, 75 basis point hike, that GIC could go from 4.5 maybe to 4.6 or 7 possibly. But again, these rates will change over time. So whenever you're watching this video, look at GIC rates compared to high interest savings and does it make sense to lock in versus having the flexibility? I think 
that's really what you need to be looking at. The third option on the list, and this isn't gonna be available to a lot of you, and it's buying direct bonds. And a lot of you are DIY investors or you're in mutual funds. If you're in mutual funds, you own bonds, but you own bond funds, or you own bonds within you know, a balanced or conservative mutual fund. And you have very little control. If you're a direct investor, if you do a DOI stuff and you're buying stocks, I've met one person in 17 years in this business that buys direct bonds, and it was a lady, she's buying direct bonds on her own. She kind of knew the system and how it worked and how to buy bonds and where to access them and all that. But typically, if you're gonna buy individual bonds, you're gonna be doing it through an investment manager. So for myself, I have my money at BCB Asset Management out of Winnipeg. Uh, we have a lot of clients with them and they buy direct bonds for our clients. So they're buying direct stock, which I'll go through here in a second, and they buy direct bonds. And so right now, uh, when I talk to Chris Richard, who's one of the portfolio managers there and manages their fixed income, he always talks about like, Adam, you know, with the bump in rates now, what I was getting, you know, three to 4% yield a few months ago, I'm now getting you know, five to 7%. And I'll give you a few examples of this. So Brookfield Asset Management, big, large company, you know, BCV just bought a bond for one of our clients in them that's yielding 6.05% and matures in 2026. The client will receive a payment, a yield, uh, interest payment of just over 6% every single year for the next four years. And after the four years, get all their money back. Another one is Parkland, again, oil and gas company, 2026 as well. And they're getting 6.26%. Third one's Air Canada, and a lot of you may say, yeah, Air Canada is going down the tube. You have your opinion on them, that's fine. As we've seen before, even if they bump up against a tough financial position, uh, the Canadian government is going to bail them out. And at the end of the day, travel is picking up. There's more flights going out every single day. Even though the airlines are having a tough time catching up, I still think Air Canada is a great bond to own, and you know, obviously BCV as well. And they're getting 6.93% on a bond that matures in 2029. So those are just a few examples per se, but buying a direct bond as long as you hold that bond to maturity, you're gonna clip that yield in the meantime. It's not a bad option. Again, it's not gonna be for a lot of you, but if you work with a portfolio manager that's able to buy individual bonds, take a look at that. Maybe you have you know, a four year time horizon until you need your cash. Can they pick up a bond that's going to give you your money back in four years that's giving you a bit more yield in the meantime? Again, you have your high interest savings account, 2%, you have your GIC at you know, four to 5%. Now you have bonds potentially, if you can buy an individual bond at closer to that 6% mark. So again, we're kind of leveling up the scale here. Now again, typically you're gonna have to lock into that bond a little bit longer to guarantee that return and your money back and all that. And so when we talk about, you know, where should you be deploying your cash is really gonna depend on your financial retirement plan. If you're kind of building up for retirement and you have a long runway, well, then you gotta look at, okay, well, does locking into a one-year GIC make sense or should I actually take on a bit more risk because I have more runway? And that's where we get into stocks. So the fourth option for you with your cash is to get it invested, get it working for you. Um, again, I've talked about it on this channel a lot. I like blue chip dividend paying stocks. I know the companies, I know I'm getting my uh, dividend. I know they increase dividends over time. They're growing companies and they're hard to repeat. Companies like Microsoft and TD Bank and RBC and Johnson & Johnson, these companies are pretty much impossible to repeat. And so owning these companies and they pay me a nice dividend in the meantime, I like that. Everyone has their own investment philosophy. So whatever yours is, does taking some or all of your cash and investing it into that philosophy make sense for you? And that's really the fourth option is, again, we've kind of scaled up to the stocks now. If you have a bit more of a runway, then maybe having some of that money, some of that cash at least, invest it in a good quality uh, company would make a lot of sense for you. Again, you're gonna have more fluctuation. The first three options are almost guaranteed, especially the first two in a high interest savings and a GIC. Those are guaranteed rates. Now, a high interest savings could change. It could go from two to one and a half or two and a half. They can change over time, but your money's guaranteed. When you get into investing, obviously there's risks to that. And we've seen that this year, in the markets alone. Even good quality companies have dropped down a little bit. So be aware of that. So when we take these four options and integrate it into your financial retirement plan, again, first thing you wanna look at is what are your goals with this money? So maybe you sold a house and, and I'm using clients that we have, a few of them, as an example here. You sold your house, you're renting, and you're looking to deploy X amount of that cash down the road. So let's say you sold your house for a million dollars and had no mortgage left. So you have a million dollars cash sitting in your bank account 
and you plan to kind of downsize out to the country a little bit, you, you need $600,000 budget for that. So you have $400,000 that you don't need for a while. And again, within the financial plan that we build for our clients, we can tell them like, here's when you need that money and how much and how often. The $600,000 has a one year plan. That might make sense in GIC. Right? They need that money. They don't want to lose it. They want a bit of a return. Inflation's really hurting them right now. They want the best return they can, but they need it safe. So in that case, I would take the 600,000, put it into a one year GIC, wherever that is, doesn't matter to me. In fact, we had a client, they just got a four and a half percent offering from RBC. So sometimes the big banks can come through with a decent rate, shop around, figure out where you're going to get the best bang for your buck. The other $400,000 for this client, the runway was long, even though they were entering into retirement now, that cash wasn't needed for quite some time. They had some other cash, some savings, that kind of stuff. So the other 400,000, we actually deployed into the market or we are deploying into the market. So again, we kind of leave that to BCV. Their money is being managed there. And BCV, Chris and his team there, will figure out how to properly invest that per their plan to make sure that there's cash flow when the cash flow is needed. Another example would be we had another client, very similar situation. They needed a little bit of money in just over a year from now. So again, we locked up into that one year GIC and we're happy with that. The rest of it, they wanted to get BCV working on it. They were a little scared about the stock market and what's gonna happen going forward. And again, it's really confusing out there right now because you watch, you gotta be careful what you watch and read here, but you watch one you know news channel and they're saying the stock market's gonna you know, have a recession and we're going to dive down another 20, 30, 50, 80%. And then you watch the other news channel and they're saying, you know, sky's the limit. Markets are going up. So you're seeing both sides of the coin. It's like, what do we believe? And no one knows. We don't have the crystal ball. So you really have to understand how much risk are you willing to take? For this client, they weren't willing to take on any risk buying stocks. They thought, you know what? I don't know if it's going up or down. I just don't like it. I lose sleep at night. Perfect. That's not a good option for you then. But they were really happy getting into some good quality bonds that they were getting kind of that five and a half to 7% yield on. So again, kind of scale back a little bit, but they're getting a good return. So they're getting four and a half percent on their one year GIC on the cash that they need in one year. And the rest of it, they bought some individual bonds. And again, those bonds as they mature, if markets have changed or the clients are a bit more comfortable, They'll either reinvest in bonds, depending on rates at that time, or getting involved in the stock market. So lots of options there. And again, for myself, I use my high interest savings account at EQ Bank for my kids' education. So really short term payments are, you know, throughout the year kind of idea. I just shove money into there. I'm getting a much better rate there than I am at my current bank, which is a credit union. But again, I think they're like 1.2% right now. So all four are great options. Again, the individual bonds aren't going to be available to everyone that watches this video, but talk to your financial advisor, your portfolio manager to see if you can buy individual bonds. Again, an individual bond is very different than a bond fund. So make sure you talk to your investment professional and understand what the differences are. But again, you know, from a scale kind of going up, it's high interest savings account, GIC, direct bonds, and stock market. And again, when I say stock market, be aware, like there, there's many le levels to that risk scale. And so you have to understand what is your risk assessment? How much risk can you take? And then talk to your investment professional about, you know, what's a good investment within that those risk parameters. And always go back to your financial plan. If you have cash right now, again, sale of a house, inheritance, whether you liquidate it out of the market, whatever it is, you need to understand your cash flow. When do you need to draw money out? That cash that you have right now, probably eventually you need to use for cash flow, for income. When is that? Where does it need to come out of? And make sure your investments line up with that so that in four years from now, when you need you know some of that money out for income to live off of, it's not locked into a bond. It's not locked into a GIC. It's not in a high risk investment that's down 40% and you don't want to sell it. So you need to understand what the plan is with that money, when you're going to need it, and then build the portfolio or the investment, whether again, it's a GIC or a stock or somewhere in between, make sure it all lines up and comes together at the end so that you don't kind of stub your foot when you need that income. So I hope this helps you out again. Those are the four options I look at when I have cash and for our clients when they have cash. So hopefully that helps you out. Uh, if you're sitting on cash right now, again, inflation's eating away. Create a plan, get locked into a GIC, do the high interest savings, get it invested, do something with it. Don't sit on cash in your bank account. It's not working for you and inflation's eating it away very quickly. So thank you for joining us in this video. We'll see you in the next one.